founded by Sven Anderson and Vincent Calabrese in the 1980s. The AHCI, or better known as the Academy, has served as an outstanding platform for independent creators of horology, catapulting watchmaking legends like Francois Poljorn and Philippe Dufour. In line with our philosophy of supporting independent creators, we are proud to announce Esperlux as an official sponsor of the AHCI. In doing so, we recently had the opportunity to sit down with four brilliant watchmakers of the Academy, each at different stages of their watchmaking journeys. As always, thanks for watching and hope you enjoy. Part 3 Bernard Lederer My name is Bernard Lederer and I'm uh, the director of the Lederer Watches brand, what is situated in Switzerland near the lake of Neuchâtel. I became interested in watchmaking by having inherited a pocket watch from my grandfather. And as a young boy, I felt a little bit like double left-handed and I wanted to ensure that I will not destroy the watch at the moment when I open to satisfy my curiosity what is inside. So I decided to go to the library and living at that time in Germany, in Stuttgart, I went down to, to the main city and there is the Baden-Württembergische Landesbibliothek, a terrible word, but it's a fantastic big library where I could borrow uh, books about watchmaking. And what is very important to know, by chance I struggled over a book where the author started in the, in the uh, foreword explaining why he became a watch collector. And his story finally made me become a watchmaker because he told that his father was used to play a game with him. Whenever he was a brave boy, he had the right to listen to the drawer of his father's office and play the game with him to find out what type of watch is hidden in the drawer. And I was reading that and I said, this is weird. A watch makes tic-tac. How just by the tic-tac you can find out. And they told about different more of watches. So I wanted to learn about escapements to, to, to get an explanation for this strange game what he apparently played with his father. And that is how the whole story started, by being forced by a strange story to learn about watch escapements. I uh, started to become a watchmaker when I was 18 years old. Before that my parents did not allow me to stop school. But when I became 18 years old I had the right to decide for myself and I decided to stop school and become a watchmaker. Especially, uh, you must not forget that was in the 70s, the time of the quartz watches. And I had, I felt it as a unique chance to get a place for apprenticeship in a private watch museum, where we had been seven watchmakers repairing historical watches. And just this chance for me was like a dream becoming true. So I went there and I started to learn watchmaking, the traditional watchmaking in a watch museum. This year nothing is new, <laughs> but last year we uh, presented the what we call the central impulse chronometer. This is a wristwatch that is based uh, on the development of George Daniels that unfortunately he could not finish uh, the development as he passed away. I consider him as a very important person in my life. He gave me a lot of advices and uh, he guided me through the jungle of uh, the watchmaking. And uh, therefore I decided to fulfill his dream and to let become reality his independent double wheel escapement to fit to wristwatches. My first watch was a clock. It was uh, requested by the school uh, where I went to to become a master watchmaker and they asked us to make a masterpiece. Having been forced to, to do that, of course I took the chance and uh, made something a little bit more uh, than was requested. They wanted to have one complication, so our minute and something more. Normal for me, I, I, I just went a little bit extreme. 
I made, of course, an escapement, a very special one, a gravity escapement. Um, I made a temperature compensated uh, pendulum for it. I made a moon position and moon phase indication in a precision that in 800 years you have, however, to correct it. But I thought 800 years that should fit. I put it on a perpetual calendar, a calendar indication that respects the leap year, of course. And the February is not only all four years that you have a 29th of February, it is even a bit, a bit more complex. Always when you have a full century, so on 1900, 2000, 2100, etc., you have a very special uh, situation that there the, the, the leap year, the, the 29th of February, will not be indicated as long as the full century cannot be divided by four. So in 1900 there is no. In 2000, exceptionally, again you will have a 29th February, you will not have it in 2100, neither in 2200 and 2300. Only in the year 2400, again, you have exceptionally one 29th of February. So poor if you are born on 2000, only in 400 years you will have birthday again. <laughs> so this correction allows now made in this table block that in 3200 years, the first time you have an additional correction, this is not respected in the clock. But until then, it shows you always the right length of the months. It had been shown, first of all, to the jury that had to judge if I will have the right to be called Master Watchmaker. And they decided, yes, we should give him that title. And then, of course, I showed it to customers. And there was a very nice customer reaction. It was, oh, I want the same but still a little bit more complicated. <laughs> so by this I got my first order uh, to again make this kind of table clock, but still a bit more complicated. And this of course I accepted, proud to have such important order so early in my career. I would like to point out that what I tell now is not my opinion, but is what I learned from visitors here at the show, from uh, persons from people that have ordered watches from me. What they say about me and my timepieces and why they feel them so special is that I go till the last point. So I am I'm a perfectionist. I, I don't let things on the halfway. Uh, the same was with the central impulse chronometer. To learn more about the development what I made I wanted to know so much more that even we developed our own measuring tool what allows us today to analyze each and every tick and each and every tuck with all uh, information what we can have now out from our measure tool. And by this we, we learned a lot, we know about the accuracy of, of this development and this is what people like. Uh, they, they feel that I don't give up uh, before I really reach the, out to the last detail. What makes the Academy so special is the multi-facets uh, uh, represented by each member. So we have from, from uh, very interesting uh, uh, fantasy clocks until the very technic uh, wristwatches we have the, the, the full scale of ideas. We have uh, watches that are made for nothing else but precision. We have watches that are made for nothing else but for the pleasure to see time indicated in a completely different way than what you are normally used to. And uh, this makes it so special, this conglomerate of uh, the wide range of, of uh, individuals on, of creativity and as the name said it's an academy of watchmakers but not only this of creator and dependent uh, this aspect of creating having fantasy and being independent this is what makes the academy so special
the demand of the customers uh, for each and every single watchmaker is different. The clients, they see um, who has its power on which field. So those who want to have uh, special indications of time without normal hands, they will address automatically towards those watchmakers who will satisfy their demand and therefore my uh, clients, they approach me because of what I'm doing. And what I'm very happy, and this is uh, the point of being independent, I must not hopefully not care about what the mass wants, or I must not care about what big brands think that the demand would be and what the trend would be. We may be contrary to the trend, and uh, it will regulate itself as long as we have customers that approach us and are happy with, with this, what we are doing. We have our market and uh, we have the chance to stay and continue to be independent. You can expect for the next year's ex excellency in watch development, excellency in different escapements. As I said, I started my career with escapements escapements are the biggest part in my life and uh, I see no reason why not uh, to continue to develop escapements and uh, show them to the collectors and uh, I feel that there is a, a big leak because escapements is the most delicate, the most sensible part in watches and uh, it needs years and years of uh, learning and of starting to understand and I'm still learning after more than 40 years still learning however now so rich on experience that there will come very very beautiful escapements to the market.